I have found that thinking both from a basic science perspective as well as from a clinical perspective has been really synergistic. The diseases that I see in the clinic frame and focus the questions that need to be asked in the laboratory. My name is Michelle Mange. I'm a neurologist, a neuro-oncologist, and a neuroscientist. My work is advancing our understanding of childhood brain cancers and developing new therapies. Early in my career, I first had the opportunity to take care of a child who had a particularly lethal and tragic form of childhood brain cancer called diffuse intrinsic pontinglioma. And I was really struck by how little we understood about that disease and how incapable we were as a medical field to offer any effective treatment. These are cancers that occur at very particular places in the nervous system at particular ages, and that really suggests that there is a process of neural development that is going awry or that is being hijacked in these malignancies. The function of a neural circuit depends upon neurons, the electrically active cells in the brain, communicating with each other. And they do this through connections called synapses. For many years, neuroscientists have studied the way that those connections change in their strength and change in their connectivity. And so as I tried to approach brain cancers that emerge from cells in the nervous system, like high-grade gliomas, including glioblastoma and diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma, I wondered whether nervous system activity might be similarly regulating the growth and development of these cancers. And so we tested that idea, and what we found was that indeed, neuronal activity is a very strong driver of growth. And so once we had that insight that brain activity could drive brain cancer growth, the first question was, you know, what is the mechanism by which this is happening? What is the molecular language that these cells are using to talk to each other? We identified a couple of really important molecular signals that are released as a result of neuronal activity. One of those is a molecule called neuroligin-3. That was really unexpected. So neuroligin-3 is a very well-known synaptic adhesion molecule. It's present at normal, healthy synapses between neural cells. It helps to keep synapses bound together. It can regulate the strength of those synapses. But it wasn't known to be a growth factor. And so we placed brain tumor cells from my patients into the brains of mice that either had or did not have expression of this molecule neuroligin-3. And what we found is that in the absence of neuroligin-3, that the brain cancers, they didn't just slow down, they just simply couldn't grow. And so that really shook our assumptions that this molecule was only functioning as a growth factor. It really suggested that there was something more fundamental to brain cancer pathophysiology that this molecule was doing. We discovered that indeed, the glioma cells, these malignant cancer cells invading the brain are actually forming these functional synapses with neurons, and that was driving the growth of these cancers. And it really suggests that as this cancer is integrating into healthy neural circuits, that in order to effectively treat it, we'll need to really disrupt this integration. Brain cancers like diffuse intrinsic pontine glioma and glioblastoma have to date been typically lethal. As we begin to understand the neuroscience of these brain cancers, it opens up an entirely new therapeutic avenue to follow. And my hope is that we'll begin to get a therapeutic handle on these diseases and be able to offer patients a better outlook.